Okay, so once you get the plugin downloaded and installed, let's just make sure we go up to Windows, Settings, Preferences, on down to the Plugins Manager, and make sure you scroll down to the Blast Code plugin, and make sure you have it ticked on. So let's just close that up. Then we can go in here. I'm just going to get out of this perspective and go to the front view. Making sure I'm in my Surfaces tab, I'm just going to stretch out a NURBS plane right over just like that and maybe grab it push it back and I can name this glass wall and now just hopping in the perspective what I'm going to do is fire up this blast code window and inside of here you see we have a couple of control tabs that we will work with but for now let's just make sure we're in our control tab and let's grab our glass wall and tick this new control and select this glass wall in the control surface and now let's slide down to the control target layer and select it also and then you can scroll down to this debris solver and tick the rigid solver and attach the rigid solver and we create this BX solver 1 so now we can actually create the explosive so let's hop into the explosive tab and let's just create this locator explosive so we can select this explosive 1 and connect it to this glass wall layer and I'm just going to grab it lift it up a bit and pull it behind the glass something like that okay so now we can hop into this damage tab making sure we have our wall selected let's go ahead and create the slab but if you look at the blast code interface you can also create it up here so let's just go ahead and tick create slab and it slaps this mesh on our plane this is a bit thick to be simulating a glass so what I want to do is reduce the thickness now you can just grab it and reduce it with the uh, scale tool but we can just do it the right way so let's make sure we in the attribute editor so in the blast code window we take the rigid bodies tab and update the list and inside of this rigid body what we can do is grab this slab 1 and select rigid and then we can reduce the mesh thickness let's just grab the mesh thickness down and I'll set mine to about 3 point, point 0.35 point and that's looking pretty decent right there and now we can actually change the look of our explosion or of our fracture because if I simulate this right now when it breaks it looks like blocks and that's not the look we're going for we want a really detailed shatter so uh, we can either use a fracture map or a fracture file and I'll show you what both of those are first we'll grab this fracture map and we'll slide down to the fracture map and select the checker box and we could just grab this noise right here and bring that noise in and you see it got rid of our block pattern and just put this little thing in the in the scene or on our wall so if I go ahead and start tweaking the parameters I could bring in a lot more detail you know and that's looking pretty nice that's you know pretty nice so, you know you can get in there and just change it up tweaking things and give it give it the look you like and now when you simulate even though it's pushing out real hard it's got a really you know it's got some randomness to it and it just doesn't look like blocks bursting out you can also use a fracture file if you don't want to use the fracture map and let's take a look at how we can do that pulling up this blast code window ticking this rigid again I'm just gonna go down and set this to set the slab fracture definition to fracture file and now let's slide down to the fracture file and grab our fracture file and these are some fracture files I created some in Photoshop and I've created some in Microsoft Paint uh, so let's just grab one and I'll just grab this one here and bring it in and you can see the definition that we get when we use a fracture file you know and you can get real real detail as far as the detail that you bring in with the fracture file like if I select that one you can see it doesn't look too detailed but if I increase the threshold I could bring in a bunch 
of detail, you know. So, you know, so that's a good way to get a nice, nice break. When I simulate this, we just get a beautiful break with small pieces and just, it just looking great. But what I need to do is decrease the size of this explosion. So let's open up the blast code window and go to this explosive. Select the explosive and over here let's go to this explosive tab and let's grab this magnitude and the size and the velocity. Just reduce it a bit. So see how that's looking. Okay, so that's looking somewhat okay. And if I needed to, I can actually change the blast wave and everything here. But we won't really get into that right now. So I'm just going to push up the velocity a little more and pull the size down. And maybe I can grab my explosive and push it off to one side. So if I push it over here, this end of the wall will kick out first. So let's see what we get. Okay, so that's that's looking a little better. And now what I can do is actually introduce my wall to gravity and make it interact with the floor. I think I'll grab everything and just lift it up a bit. And I can turn off that control. So open up the blast code window, go to the control, slide down to target visibility, and let's turn that off. And that's good. We'll go to the BX Solver 1 select that solver and now what we can do is just look around in here and tick this gravity flag and also tick the ground flag and now you see what we get when we run our simulation okay our piece is breaking and I need to increase my frame count uh, maybe a hundred is good and that's it's still a very large explosion, so I can pull the size down and everything, but we'll get to that in the next part of this tutorial.